You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, it's uh, 5.40 uh, this Monday, May 9, 2022. I want to call this uh, Board of Police Commissioners meeting to order. Um, can we get an approval of the minutes of About the attendance. Monday, April 11th? Do you want attendance? Uh, well, we can, we can see everybody who's here. Does she know that? Are you taking the minutes? Oh no. No, 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 no. Um, Trista was unable to, at the last minute, to make it. Um, so she won't be with us tonight, but we can take care of the minutes. Okay. So Jill is at, she's the only one that's yes. absent. Right, okay. I do want to mention that uh, uh, that uh, our chairwoman, Jill Marcus, is not here tonight. And we send our regards and our condolences to her and her family. They. Uh, uh, she lost her husband, Ed, and uh, we, we send our condolences from, from the board and wish them well. Um, uh, so, uh, approval of the minutes? Motion uh, to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Board of the Chief. All right. Good evening, and uh, I also would like to send our condolences to, to the Marcus family. Um, Ed was certainly a, a well-known figure in Brantford and um, our thoughts are with with her as she moves through the grieving process. Uh, along those lines, I would be remiss to, to send our, our, our sympathies to the family of the, the victims of the uh, fatal car accident on Hosley Avenue. Um, we've assigned an investigator to work with the families, they have a liaison, um, but they're in our thoughts and prayers, and that'll be a, a detailed investigation, and that won't be publicly released for quite some time, but they are working on it. Uh, very hard for everyone involved, but they are definitely in our thoughts and our prayers um, as, as, they, as they move forward. May I just make a comment on that? I would, from, I'll speak in behalf, I hope, of the police commission, our thanks for the hard work that's been done in the last horrible few days on this crash and handling the death notifications and handling the families. And to the officers specifically, so because I don't know who they are, I would ask you to extend our thanks and appreciation. We will, and um, you know, it's obviously that the families are our, our priority during those times and we do everything we can but there's only so much we can do, but there is a, an impact on the agency and the officers. It was very, very solemn around here. And, um, you know, we, we, we do work forward to get as much information for the families um, as, as we can, and we're gonna do our best to do that. So I do appreciate that, and I will extend that to them. Thank you. Um, moving on in the, the monthly statistical report, as you see, um, Dominique, our, our crime analyst, she's kind of put it in a little bit of different format, same type of information. Um, some of the things that'll jump out at you that we've, we've been talking about, I'll just highlight them real quick, are theft of motor vehicle parts or accessories. You'll see that that's in the second column on the first page, uh, the second section, I'm sorry, a thousand percent increase. A little of that is due to some of our cleaning up of some of the coding this is all basically catalytic converter thefts. Uh, it, it's it's a statewide national problem right now. So you're gonna see those numbers. Those are pretty significant numbers. But a little of it is us going back and looking at other cases that may have been coded out with a theft from vehicle versus a, a theft of motor vehicle parts. So that's a little high. Unfortunately, our mental health calls continue to increase. We're, we're still on a trend. And our family dispute or our domestics are down, but what is concerning is our family domestic disputes with violence 
have increased and they've increased substantially. So we're seeing the mental health, we're seeing the domestic violence in those areas, as well as our drug overdoses. And these are all types of things that we've seen coming out of, out of the pandemic. But um, again, this is where our focus is. This is what we're, we're honing in on. Um, and this is what our officers are, are, are dealing with. So when we look at the domestic violence calls, those are very labor intensive calls. A lot of officers are on those calls, upwards of three, two officers and supervisor um, and our protocols that are in place. So their efforts are, are, are not un, unnoticed, but these are areas we're looking at. And we brought Danielle in um, as our social worker and we would hope to see these numbers trend down, but but they're not, that they're trending up. So keep an eye on that. Our accidents are pretty stable, down um, down a little bit. We, we should see an increase in traffic as we go into the warmer months in the summer season here on the shore. And as far as the asset forfeiture report, um, nothing new, no, no deposits to, to speak of. And I just have a couple other issues I want to get on there with me. So as far as um, personnel, just to give you a couple of updates of where we stand in staffing and we have uh, Sergeant Carney is on, on light duty. We have Sergeant Mike O'Connor is on long-term uh, sick leave and we have Amanda Gonzalez who's on light duty also. The reason why I highlight this is Sergeant Carney and uh, Mike O'Connor are, are sergeants and that's gonna create a, a void in our, our sergeant's rank. So as we, we move into the next couple months, we do have a promotional list that we're working on. Uh, they're studying now and in the next couple weeks they will take the necessary tests and if we do have an opening, um, we'll look at it at this point. But right now, we have a little, a little shortage. Uh, we're filling it with overtime, but you know, we're, it's, they're covering it with the other sergeants and some of the lieutenants are, are taking some overtime. So you know, as far as service goes, we're, we're not having any issues. It's just something that I wanted the commission to be aware of. Um, you know, specifically, overtime has been doing good. We're trending well with that, but. You, another thing that'll drive a little spike in our overtime. Uh, also, and speaking <clears throat> along the lines of what the commissioner was talking about, what some of the officers experience and what we deal with, we're, our employee assistance provider has um, basically sold a, a part of that business and they're no longer gonna be, be our frontline employee assistance program. We've now we're with a company called KGA for our officer wellness and, and employee assistance program. So far, the transition has been very well, uh, been very good. They've retained one of our old um, EAP li liaisons to stay on for about six months to, to assure that all the public safety clients are, are happy. And for us, what this means is just introducing some new faces. Um, but what, we're, what, what I think we're losing a little bit with some of the the face-to-face -face contacts and knowing some of these people as we're gaining with other services that we didn't have before. So they're getting um, elder care. So if you have a loved one that needs elder care, that can be very stressful for, for somebody. They have resources that are covered under our plan. Legal advice, um, if they in need of legal advice, non-employment related, you know, not for, but for family issues, um, there's a block of time that they can utilize legal services with an attorney under this EAP. Child care issues, getting uh, child care, a whole host of litany of, of services that we didn't have before. So we're gonna give it a try, but I think it's important to bring up because um, we really need to, to keep, keep tabs on our officers and make sure everyone's you know, wellness, mental health is, is really 
what we can we're concerned about so we're going to give it a try they came and they met with our um, supervisors so that's something that uh, we're transitioning out also i want to uh, bring to you a few weeks ago if you saw in the news there was a hostage situation in the town of guilford our south central regional swat team along with our hostage uh, negotiators and crisis negotiators and some of our support staff here from the building a lot of our personnel went and helped uh, a great team effort by by all the departments that were there and a very long uh, standoff with with the subject and it came to a successful resolution our team had to to um, take a, a stand back because they were there for about 17 hours um, and you can't operate under those conditions. So the state police came in and uh, shortly thereafter, it was resolved and uh, she is doing well and, and unharmed um, at this point. But out of that, we, we work closely, the regional team, the training you see, the SWAT team, the negotiators, a lot of our people here uh, were there for almost 24 hours. So, you know, we wanna thank them for, for their efforts. And that is a very high risk, as you know, that's a very tough <clears throat> crisis to deal with. But from the command level down, it was it was done very well. Um, our hats off to, to Chief Hyatt and Deputy Chief Massey in, in Guilford, uh, utmost professionals. And, uh, you know, I think it speaks volumes of, of how it resolved, thankfully. Along that lines, one of the things that I wanna bring forth to the commission to put on our long-term planning and something that we need to consider is as we look at our resources, uh, one thing that I, I think that we need to consider is what they call a command post. It basically is just a large vehicle that allows us to operate in inclement in weather with all the technology and literally the, the conference table or the office space that we need this was highlighted again in Guilford. They do have one that's smaller and our, our tactical team and the negotiators use that. And we've had other high profile labor intensive crisis situations like the Main Street shooting where a vehicle like this would, would really help our operation. We've looked at these in the past on a regional basis. Unfortunately, some of the federal money that does come through and comes to the state really doesn't lend itself well to it because it's divvied up to different um, functions, what they call emergency support functions. And then it's done on a regional basis. So it would be available to say 20, I forget the number, 28 different communities. I think at that point it becomes a little hard to manage it. Mm -hmm. They have a heavy price tag. They run anywhere from what we would need is about 300,000. Wow to $350,000. Um, it would be beneficial to both public safety operation in Brantford for the fire department and for us, and specifically too for our investigators. Unfortunately, a lot of the scenes that they go to, uh, the homicide, it's in a, in a business parking lot. They have to prepare documents, they have to log evidence. We've had other scenes that it's been zero degrees out, the wind's blowing. Um, so something like this would be something that would allow us to operate in those conditions. And also we have a lot of events. We have the Brantford Road Race, we have the fireworks, we have the Christmas parade where we have a lot of officers working and the officer in charge could utilize this for communications and be out of inclement weather also. Can uh, the forfeiture money be used? It, it, it can, it far exceeds our, our budget. And yes, we can look at going down a little bit in the price scale, but then you get something that's just too small and you know you kind of always regret, well, why didn't we get what we needed in the first place and do it right the first time? So it's something that I wanted to bring to the commission that we can talk about. I'd like to look at maybe getting a committee from some of the officers in the department and there's certain officers that are involved with our regional teams that we've all worked together and we've been on. Unfortunately, this group has had some of the worst crisis in New Haven County over the past couple of years. 
So we know what works, we know what we need, but I'd like to even maybe reach out to some of those that have been involved. Hey, what did we need? Uh, we'd have a, someone from IT assist us because these are, the IT demand is one of the things that we really need. Because during the crisis, we find that our cellular service lags, our internet service will get shut down because if people are posting videos, they're taking up the bandwidth. So sometimes <coughs> our communications gets hampered. So we have to have redundancy in our systems with different carriers and different mobile hotspots. So if, it, if it's something that, um, you know, the commission looks favorably on, I can start that process going and get some people in, in to do that. Um, I also would look at spending a big chunk of that asset forfeiture money, say 100,000, right to that. And then maybe looking at there's the ARPA money that's coming up. Um, it's a pretty big capital ask, um, so I'd have to put it in our five year. But five years? Oh, uh, I mean our five year capital plan. Oh, um, just yeah. basically. I mean, you need it today. So what about so what about a, a federal grant for this? Because there was a point where departments were getting these with federal. Money, yeah, they were like um, community outreach vehicles. Yeah. Uh, they weren't really the ones that I saw. They weren't really this size. They were more like a sprinter van that they retrofitted to, to fit for community outreach well, and recruitment. Right now, you know, it's, everybody's all hot on we're not going to defund the police. We want to help the police. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of federal money, um, would it be worth, I don't know if you're interested in this, is there a grant writer here? Yeah, you're looking at him. Oh, <laughs> you're good, us, okay. Us, to, us too. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, no, but so then my next thought was to meet with Rosa to find out if there is a pot of money we can apply for. I'm that, happy to do that. That's a possibility. Um, the Homeland Security money, I know, like I said, it what we get allocated to our region, it would capture all that money, but then we would be, you know, we'd be liable for all the other departments that are in our region. Because it's a regional asset and we would take ownership yeah, of it. Okay. So, it, you know, I was, we used to have, and they still do, East Haven, Hamden, mm -hmm. and um, East Haven, Hamden, North Haven shared a, a a vehicle like this that. many 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 through actually i think it was a grant through a mad or, or we assisted with back it, yeah. back in the 90s but that was difficult when you share it, I, I get that it works out and we would have no problem again we work very closely with six towns six towns are make up our traffic team they make up our swat team um what am i missing john shoreline technical there's right. a, a few of them in there, there. So we have a core group. Guilford brings their command post, they'll bring it to North Haven, they brought it to Brantford for us, but it's a little smaller. And during these tactical operations in the larger scale incidents, it's just, it's occupied by either the negotiators or the, the tactical people, and then it leaves the bosses, the command bosses, kind of outside. So we need, we need a bigger one. And I think what the amount of uh, events we have alone in Brantford. And the goal is to have this vehicle set up so that police and fire op operations could continue to be dispatched even if we weren't in this building. So. I don't think it's even, well, I'll speak for myself, I don't think it's even an issue that I agree. something mm -hmm. that yeah. Brantford needs. I think the question is, you know, the other piece is, is there funding that if you needed match money, I don't know if you did, if, if, you know, do you have match money here or I don't well, know. Or could you use the forfeiture money as match? Most most likely where it gets a little bit difficult with some of the asset forfeiture money is who's using this vehicle, but it would be ours, so that shouldn't be a problem. Commingling the money with other departments sometimes is permissible. <laughs> There's guidelines, but um, that's something we can certainly put on. So I, I think we look at specking and scoping the vehicle. To see how much it really costs. Well, the the two main players, is there's two really, two main manufacturers. And with the supply chain issues and mm -hmm. cost increases, what they started to do was they, they've had so many clients, they've taken 
the best designs that they feel and they've just produced certain models that are available. If we were to go to spec and say we had the money and we wanted to do this, um, it would probably be about a year and a half wait, I would assume a year wait at least. But now they're making, when I said IT, you know, okay, what do we need in it? What systems do we need? They've already run the wiring. Um, mm -hmm. they've, already, they've already done all that. So there are some that are available. Um, but I think we look at the funding source also that, you know, I did not put a request in on the first round of the ARPA money. Um, at the time, I didn't see it necessary. But as we move forward, uh, this has been something that we've been discussing back and forth. And we do realize it's a big ticket item. I'd like to see the fire department uh, partner with us, but <laughs> I, I understand the money comes out of the same the same pot anyways. Well, I personally don't think so, it's a big ticket item. I think it's something that's a necessity. Uh, Chief, um, what what's your proposal in terms of getting back to us on this? What I mean, you know, like well, well if it's something that that, that the board um, feels like they would support, then I what I would do is I would assign someone to reach out to the manufacturers um, and and confirm the the pricing and that it meets our specs of what we want. Consult with IT and see what the budget they would need to add. You know, the technology's gotten better, so, you know, some of the mobile hotspots and stuff, that's not costly. And then we would have to, the third part would be searching for the funding. Um, again, my recommendation is that we would take, uh, I'd be comfortable with 100,000 right off the asset forfeiture. I, I don't anticipate a lot of money coming in in the future in asset forfeiture, but that would still leave us enough that- um, We're at 180 now? We're we're, we're we're like two two twelve. Two twelve now. Okay, somewhere in there. But I don't anticipate significant money coming in like you used to see. The courts have changed a little bit. There's a different focus, so we're not seeing the money on the state side, and we're not seeing as much coming on the federal side. So it's it's not a you know we can't keep going back to the bank every time there. All right. So um, is it fair enough for us to say, go ahead and take a look at it and just yeah, come back to us? Yeah, we'll, we'll go from we'll there. report back. Okay. Um, okay. All right. And the only other thing I have, I have some um, correspondence. I know that if the chair was here, she would say that <clears throat> we've never got a, a bad letter, but that's not true. But these are all very... <laughs> <clears throat> do we get to see the bad letters? We do. we do. We do. I just haven't seen one since I've been on. Okay. Well, I can tell you that I have not gotten a bad one since you've been on. Great. <laughs> um, but then again, so I have one from for Dominic uh, Eula. He's the lieutenant in our detective bureau. And this one came in from a family member of a, a very a difficult case. Um, a, a family member had taken their, their life and um, Detective Lieutenant Eula and the, the other detectives met with the family and they, they went over the case and they just wanted to say thank you and the compassion um, and, and the sense of closure that it provided. So again, a tough situation that we, we did the best we could and helped the family. Uh, Sergeant Carney brings the dog down Pretty much every year now, she's been going down to the University of New Haven and meeting with the students down there doing a, a canine demonstration. And uh, Danny Maxwell from, from UNH reached out, just wanted to thank us for the continued support and her time and efforts. And this one, we received a call. There was a, a motorist, an 86-year-old female. She was on her way to church with her 88-year-old sister um, they got a flat tire and there was not a tow truck available and Officer Cope stayed with them and uh, gave them assistance for quite some time and they just wanted to call and say thank you for, for the officer's attention to their, their tough morning. <laughs> and Officer Mike Loftus, uh, I received a, a letter from a, a crime victim uh, their home was burglarized and stolen, and they just wanted to say how empathetic and thorough and, and uh, 
how much he put into their case and how much of a credit he is to the department. He was able to secure an arrest in that case and they wanted to thank us for that. So uh, they wanted to commend Officer Mike Loftus for his, his effort. <coughs> and, you know, as we talked about the Special Olympics, Officer Hurton and or Detective Hurton and Officer Harrington, their efforts, we were the top fundraiser for Special Olympics and this was a parent of a Special Olympian who wanted to write and say thank you for all their efforts and that it really does make make a difference to them. Um, so again, hats off to them for just continued great job. High achievers, they set the bar very high. I don't know how they're gonna do it again, but we'll, we'll, we'll that keep going. So, yeah. and Deputy, do you have anyone else? No, I don't have anything. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay, uh, I'd like to uh, talk about the traffic committee now. Okay. Okay. Um, you met earlier this evening. The first item on the agenda was a request for crosswalks along Indian Neck. Um, the committee recommends that it had been approved for Tool Drive. Recommends no action at this time because it requires funding. Right, so, well, let's just, let's just, uh, I clarify that further. In other words, it's it's already in the system. It's ready to go, and we're just waiting for the town to fund it. Right. Second item, request for a stop sign and feather bed. This is not a new issue. It is something that has come to the traffic committee at least two times prior. Uh, there's a citizen concerned about the speed specifically the um, dump trucks that go up and down. So the committee recommends uh, that Office, uh, Lieutenant Ramey will um, get in contact with the construction company and talk to them about reducing their speed. There is no action on the stop sign. Okay. The last request was for signage and traffic calming measure on Hosley Avenue. Um, this is the site of the, the horrible accident um, earlier this month. We're recommending the process of a, a study be done, an independent study, um, regarding the volume of traffic and use on that specific road and looking at it from a town-wide perspective and not just a neighborhood perspective. And the committee recommends that take place. Other than that, um, no other no other items for this month. Great. All right, I have no report of the chair. Uh, any citizens comments? I don't see any. <laughs> I, I yes. just have a couple questions. Um, I was wondering who is the investigator on the um, on the death of the, the, the Sergeant the Christopher Romanella. Romanella. Okay. Yes, okay. not, not a week ago. <clears throat> Um, and then, um, as far as the letters that, that people send in, like the positive, because I, I actually like to reshare stuff, stuff like that on social media, because I'm trying to turn that into a type of journalism, um, to give positive, um, I get a positive influence on social media for cops, because I feel like it doesn't always happen. I do this thing called hot cop season. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I've gotten the other towns to do it. Um, did you ever think of sharing the good the letters in you know in a meetings other than this so that people could i just ask you to identify yeah. yourself please oh i'm sorry i'm to... i'm ashley fun um i was a resident of Brantford. i <clears throat> now um a senior at Fairfield U. I used to be a journalist i used to write for the sound um and i am trying to marry my old journalism skills with with the younger generation of social media, of social media which you can't, you can't beat them. I don't like saying that. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> um, so can you share those letters that people write? Sure, we do. I mean, this okay. is typically the forum where they're shared, but I'd be glad to share them with yeah. you if you'd like to see them. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, this meeting is also televised, so yeah, I, right. the letters get out. Well, oftentimes, uh, again, a lot of them deal with, you know, oh, tragedies and issues that that the families have experienced. So sometimes, you know, I would, some of them are writ, they're heartfelt okay, towards okay. the officer. And um, if you 
here when I say I say there was a resident who suffered a loss or a suicide in the family, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily identify them. Okay. Um, but we we can release the letters, but with those type of letters, I would ask, I'd probably reach out back to the victim. Because right. some of them are very yeah. detailed, specific to the officer, um, but they're public documents. They are, okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.